Well, it's my first Russian truck review. So welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm your host, Nathan. And again, by request of you asked me to review a truck that's not a North American vehicle this time. It's actually a Russian truck and it's found in Tamir and it's arguably one of the stronger vehicles in the game. So without further ado, here is the Dan 96 320. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you like the channel and its content, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, and please share the video as well. So let's get into this. Roll the tape. The Dan 96 320 is based off the BAZ 6909 Russian artillery tractor and missile vehicle. The Bryansk automotive plant specializes in contracts for the Russian army such as the BAZ 6909. In SnowRunner, that vehicle is the Dan 96 320. This truck is one of the more powerful plug and play easy mode trucks that you find. It's powerful, rugged, and it's definitely durable. The Dan seems to be overshadowed by the overwhelming popularity of its fellow Russian off-roaders and also modded trucks. Like any truck, it has noticeable downsides and some really good upsides as well. So before we dive into those, let's get into some base stats. The Dan 96 320 is classified as a heavy truck. It weighs 16.9 tons. In its stock configuration, it has a power to weight of A+, a durability of A, fuel consumption B-, Fuel capacity is 350 liters or 93 gallons. It has a stock suspension. Its tires also come stock with a 51 inch all terrain tire. Its all wheel drive is always on and its diff lock is always on as well. All right, let's dive into the pros and cons of the Dan 96 320. Bad news first, as always. So, coming in at the number one downside front overhang. When it comes to off roading and snow runner, there are some things that really frustrate drivers. When you get this vehicle back to the garage after completing the Lost in the Woods task on the quarry map, you notice it has a sizable front overhang. This large front overhang seems to cause some issues by catching on terrain as you traverse your way through the elements. Through testing, it seems that this is the main issue that slows progress in deep areas or in really bumpy, rocky spots. The Dan's front overhang, however, doesn't seem as bad as the Azov 73210 when it comes to getting caught up though. To get right to the point, people hate slow progress, and this downside requires some patience. It also affects some other things, so stick around. Downside number two, long wheelbase. I could be overstepping with this statement, but I believe the Dan has the longest wheelbase in the game for a vehicle that can only hold two pieces of cargo. This downside can cause the vehicle to high center in really steep, dipping terrain and also when rock crawling. There's speculation that it's one of four vehicles in the game to have an independent suspension. This helps with stability when crawling through rocks and bumps, but the wheelbase is a downside. The Dan's long frame becomes an issue every now and then, so just be prepared to either be slowed or the winch. On a brighter note, at least you get an extra winch spot with that long frame. Up next at number three downside, wheel spin. The Dan has a strong engine, giving it a very high power to weight rating. The bad news is, it tends to have a lot of wheel spin in muddy areas. The funny thing I found is that even when it's stuck, sometimes it will just refuse to downshift the first gear to progress through mud. To mitigate this, just manually downshift to low, low plus, or low minus to keep forward movement. This downside requires drivers to notice too much wheel spin to prevent digging yourself into a hole. The times throughout the video that you see me downshift to low and high gears is just due to excessive wheel spin. Through gear manipulation, you'll find the sweet spot to reduce the wheel spin and make progress. Downside number four, weight and distribution. So our number one downside mentions this large front overhang, but I need to mention that the Dan seems to be balanced more toward the front end. This seems to explain why the nose buries itself in mud. Also, when submerging the cab in water, the back end will tend to float, further confirming that its weight is mostly in the front end. Having that large, heavy chin will get you caught up in some areas. To add to its weight and balance, the Dan is actually the fifth lightest truck in its class with the strongest engine in the game. Now, with our current downsides we just listed, it's quite a frustrating concoction. A large chin, a nose-heavy, lightweight frame with crazy power, it just seems like a lot for a driver to manage. Downside number five, no raised suspension option. While I don't think this is a big deal, this vehicle doesn't have the race suspension option. 
it probably would mitigate some contact issues and increase rock crawling performance. While there are only a few trucks in the game that actually excel in rock crawling, the Dan isn't too bad with its current ground clearance. For not having this option, its stock suspension seems to be better than the Azov brothers. And finally at downside number 6, no small crane. For those who love the small crane attachment with the sideboard bed, this one could be a deal breaker for you. While the Dan has good utility when it comes to add-ons and trailers, the total lack of small crane option is kinda strange. It's strange because it has room for a spare tire where the small crane would go, but it can't equip a small crane. To be honest, if we take into account that it's nose heavy already, the crane would just further add to the weight problems we just talked about. Maybe this one could be a blessing in disguise, but hey, it had to go on the list. Well, time for the good news. Here are the pros for the Dan 96320. Coming in at upside number one, power. A lot of vehicles in the game display that they have a S plus rating, but when attaching a sideboard bed, that rating is somewhat reduced. Not so much with the Dan. This is the first sign or indicator that this engine is super strong. The next sign or indicator is that it shares the same engine with both Kolobs, the Azov Antarctic, and the Azov 73210, which is currently the strongest engine in the game. Those vehicles we just listed are some of the heaviest in the game and still boast respectable power ratings. Personally, I can't think of another vehicle with a higher power to weight rating. The following sign to add to that is how the Dan just handles heavy loads. And lastly, the vehicle always seems to one fifth gear, even in rough terrain. Usually, I run around in high gear to mitigate downshifts while keeping decent pace, but the Dan seems comfortable and automatic. To put in perspective how strong this engine is, the Azov 73210 outweighs the Dan by roughly 3 tons and still boasts a power to weight of S+. And there's no way to deny it. When it comes to engine strength, the Dan's a powerhouse. Upside number 2. All-wheel drive and diff lock always on. Having one of the strongest engines coupled with this upside is a great pairing. Although wheel spin can be a factor like we explained, the all-wheel drive and diff lock always on is awesome for this truck. Pushing that type of power to every axle without lockups, I have to say, is quite a sight to see. This truck is what I like to call an easy mode truck, for sure. Coming in at upside number 3, large fuel tank and range. One of the strangest yet pleasing things about this vehicle is its fuel burn, and it has a very large 350 liter 93 gallon tank to go along with that. The odd thing is that the Dan has the strongest engine in the game, and also it says that its fuel consumption is C-. You would think naturally the trade-off for power would be fuel economy, but it's not the case. As I've mentioned before in previous videos, if your fuel consumption is in the high 4s, 5s, and 6 gallons per minute range, that's bad fuel economy. The Dan under load hardly gets into the 4 gallons per minute range unless it's extremely stressed. However, it will touch those numbers I listed, but not for long periods of time. I believe its good fuel economy is attributed to its lighter weight with an amazing engine. Most of the time, the engine just seems like it doesn't have to work as hard, so it doesn't burn as much fuel. Out of all the trucks I've reviewed so far, I believe the Dan has the best range. Through testing, I've noticed that it's been able to complete two or three tasks on one tank, which is far better than some. It's one of the best upsides. Upside number four, large tires and suspension. As I've mentioned in the base stats, the suspension is stock, but it still has decent ground clearance. It also has a large 51 inch tire that can upgrade to mud tires as well. I believe this upside is a must for the Dan due to some of its downsides. But regardless, anytime you get above 50 inches, it's pretty exciting. Upside number five, stability. The Dan is one of four vehicles in the game to have an independent suspension on all axles. Other vehicles that are speculated to have this feature are the Kolobs and the Tatran 420. All those vehicles are really stable. I expected bad performance when going over rocks and certain dips, but the frame seems to not flex too much. The Dan's low profile and wide stance give it great resistance against tipping. The way it handles semi-trailers without tipping also is pretty impressive. Also, I might add that this vehicle is becoming my favorite for hauling semi-trailers. A really cool feature is that you can jackknife the trailer and still keep the truck and the trailer upright when turning around. To add to that, being that it's heavy in its front end, the more weight on its rear axles increases performance in my opinion. 
Some trucks lose steering capabilities and they also suffer instability when towing semi-trailers, but the Dan has been stellar. By adding weight on the rear axles, it will lighten the nose somewhat which helps reduce hang-ups. Coming in at the number 6 upside, no snorkel needed. Now I was going to say that this was a downside and then I noticed that the Dan's air intakes are on the top of the vehicle. Although this vehicle isn't super tall, the truck can do river crossings rather well. You practically have to drown the whole cab to get engine damage, so this time I guess no snorkel was needed. Upside number 7, durability. In the off-roading world, it's not if you're going to take damage, it's when. The Dan is superb at resisting damage and has a good damage tolerance as well. That independent suspension we talked about helps it not take damage at max speed unlike some vehicles. It's really frustrating having to return to the garage to repair due to excessive damage. If you're a person who loves a reliable, durable truck, then the Dan is your vehicle. And finally, at our number 8 upside, it's free. The Lost in the Woods task on the quarry map will grant you this truck. It's odd that it's free because of how strong it is, but hey, I'm not complaining. To acquire one of the stronger, capable vehicles in the game for free is a massive upside, meriting its way onto the list. So in conclusion, this truck is a monster, yet I must admit it does have noticeable downsides that you have to deal with. The large heavy front end will get you into trouble sometimes and tend to slow your progress. In my first playthrough, I didn't use it much more than just with the crane, but recently, I've changed my mind. If you really drive it with the intent to mitigate its downsides, the upsides will make you fall in love with it. Unlike other trucks, its downsides are somewhat easy to work around due to its raw ability, but definitely requires patience. I really suggest using it with a 5 slot semi trailer. The key seems to be to have as much weight on the aft part of the frame. The weight pushing down on its rear axles offsets the downsides and it downright handles heavy tasks. With great fuel economy and range, the Dan stays relevant on these larger maps where trips get longer and fuel stations less common. It's truly a powerhouse, and I've had a lot of fun driving it and testing its capabilities. I plan on using it a lot now. Try it out, and let me know what you think. I hope this review gave you a fresh new perspective of the Dan 96320. Please smash the like button, definitely share this video with someone who is struggling with the game, and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any future content. Hope you all have a wonderful day, God bless, and stay upright.